Hello, I am Dr. Sora Patwadan from Nandadi Pai Hospital, FECO, SICS Training Center and PG Teaching Institute. And uh, in this interesting video, I'll be speaking about a case of heart cataract. And I'm going to show you a lot of different things which happened during this case. So it's a very interesting video to watch. So it's a case of PXF as you can see and there is a dense cataract. The pupil is mid dilated. I have used Hylio coat for the capsular axis, and uh, you can say I should have stained the capsule better because the contrast is quite less. So I am going quite carefully here, and as I can judge during the capsular axis is that there is some amount of zonular weakness. I am going to use very minimal fluid for hydro dissection because it's a very dense cataract I don't want the fluid to be trapped causing a posterior capsular tear so just minimal hydro dissection to rotate the nucleus and since I noted the movement of the bag I'm going to put CTR it's better to do it at the start if you are noticing that the zonules are quite weak and now what I'm doing here is I'm using the Sinsky in my left hand to push the eyelet of the CTR into the bag otherwise it might just slip into the sulcus and is of no use so once I know that one eyelet is in the bag I am going to go very slow pushing the rest of the CTR inside and at the end I am going to use my micro axis forceps to hold this other eyelet and then again the Sinsky is used to hold the eyelet and guide it into the bag so once the CTR is in the bag the bag gets more support now because the zonules are weak here I'm going to do vertical trenching so by vertical trenching you can see I'm going deeper with the FACO tip while I'm cutting the nucleus so avoiding the horizontal movements of the trenching which may put excess stress over these already weakened zonules this vertical trenching is a good technique and once you have the half trench I am going to do the chop I am trying to divide till the center of the nucleus here so I don't have a attached central posterior plate and now I am going to divide each hemineucleus into multiple small pieces again a little bit lazy here not to divide it till the posterior plate now I did it so because the nucleus was very densely packed in the back I'm going to take out one piece here so that I get more space for the nucleus rotation in the back and uh, for these cases where there is a uh, weak zonules it's better to do the bimanual rotation where the tip of the FECO and the Sinsky are used together to rotate the nucleus in the back further division of the nucleus is done the multi-level chop so you go with Sinsky deeper down till the posterior plate it's a blunt instrument so your, your PC is safe and once uh, you have satisfactory division of the nucleus I'm going ahead with the quadrant removal here and uh, fallibility is great because of the pieces are nice and separated so if you find that the fallibility is not good make sure that pieces are separate and this is the OVD pit stop that's what I call to protect the endothelium in such cases where I'm going to use uh, slightly higher FACO energy in the anterior chamber and you can see the other heminucleus the pieces are little bit attached to each other and uh, so you have to be little patient there now the use of CTR sometimes uh, catches the cortex so at some places the cortex is free so CTR is not trapping it so there the removal is uh, quite straightforward quite easy but uh, in some areas the cortex might be trapped so it is around the uh, CTR so in such cases we have to use the tangential movement of the eye probe so the cortex comes over the CTR you can see it comes over the CTR and then taken out but in certain places uh, it may be difficult to do that so you can go ahead pull the posterior cortical sheet out but wherever you pull this cortical 
sheet from the posterior side, the anterior cortical sheet might be still trapped around the CTR. So you have to watch for that in that area. So as you can see here, I've inserted the eye well and now I'm going to flush under the iris as well because uh, it takes out some pieces which might be there under the iris as you can see here. That's very important when you have mid dilated pupil and such dense cataract and as you can see I could take out some more maybe cortex under the iris and uh, now I am just watching this uh, peripheral part of the back carefully and I notice the area from where I have taken out the posterior cortical sheet the anterior cortical sheet was trapped there so always uh, remember that and now what I noticed is that uh, the haptic was in fact in the sulcus in the inferior part uh, so it's good that I noticed it because sometimes uh, if you don't observe properly uh, before you close one haptic may stay in the sulcus and these patients may get not only refractive cylinder but uh, might be constant irritation of the iritis and uh, this may be one of the causes for post-operative recurrent inflammation in a patient. So I have re-injected the OVD and now I'm going to uh, dial this uh, haptic properly into the bag. So once both haptics are in the bag, we know that refractive stability is better. There is no irritation of the iris and patients are more comfortable. So always watch out for this because a good surgery and if you keep one haptic in the sulcus may result in bad post-operative outcome. So many things to learn from this video, do continue watching my other videos on my YouTube channel, do subscribe and leave your comments and suggestions. Do visit my Facebook page also, fecotraining.org.in. Thank you so much.